All right, I want to talk a little bit about the F-117 itself. This is the primary device that's been built. And it has some unique features uh, different from other Rife devices. It has one of the best frequency generators that money can buy. It is not a sound card audio based system. And sometimes you'll see Rife systems <coughs> advertises Rife CDs and, and uh, you can use MP3s on this, this Rife device. The problem with those systems is they don't have enough bandwidth to really deliver good targeting. So the bandwidth of an audio sound card, and they're about $15 for these guys to buy them, is only 20,000 hertz. That's within the range of human hearing. The bandwidth of a frequency generator is 800 million hertz. That's the difference. So why is that important? Why is bandwidth important? The only analogy I can give, or one of the best ones, is a sound card is like a slingshot, and you can hit things. But if you're out in the woods, and you're stranded, and you need food, would you rather have a slingshot or a shotgun? Because that's what a frequency generator is like. It has enough bandwidth that you can do precision targeting. And that's very, very important. Uh, some of the programming we do is unique to True Rife. We have special uh, fuzz commands. Uh, we call this divisional convergence harmonics. And this is a special command that uses the correct harmonics. Usually, if uh, those of you that own our software, if you look at fuzz, it'll say 0 0.1 to 0 0.03125. And without getting into a lot of detail, that's a harmonic frequency. It'll give you all the harmonics because we drive square waves to get you up to scale to reach things that the primary frequency may not be touching. Those who are musicians understand harmonics, how you move up the scale. Now, last year, I received from one of our network researchers, he sent me uh, a, the, the research frequencies from another researcher, very well known, I won't mention her name, very well respected, and I respect him as well. And I loaded up their information, and I looked at it, and I said, this is the stuff I was doing seven years ago. And it did not have the divisional convergence harmonics. It did not have those fuzz commands. And I have publicly released this information. This isn't private, something proprietary. I've let the world know. And I've given them the technical information of why this is necessary. A 0.1 to 0.125 is another harmonic that can be used. But these are very important or you're going to start missing things in their entirety. So why is it that these other manufacturers or other people are not using these harmonics or this discovery of ours? And I'll tell you why. It's because many of them are using frequency generators or sound card devices that don't have the bandwidth to run those fractional frequencies. So they run these whole numbers and they miss a lot of things. And then they come back to True Rife and say, your frequencies don't work. Well, I got news for them. You're not really driving my frequencies because I'm driving fractions all around the primary. We can do that because we have a frequency generator. But those that understand that their devices can't run those, that's why they don't even put it in their programming because it's not possible. So to help you understand what's happening is, if you don't have a frequency generator like we have in the F-117 to drive these precision frequencies with, with this kind of bandwidth, what you're buying is, say, a flute. So you've got one instrument. Now, if I was in a four-piece band, what do you need? You need a lead guitarist, you need vocals, you need a drummer, and you need a bass player. So if I was to use that analogy, they have, say, the uh, lead guitarist. <coughs> But they don't have rhythm, they don't have bass, they don't have drums, and they don't have vocals. Why? Because they don't have the bandwidth to, to run all those things on the musical scale. They can't do it. And so, basically, there you are. And so that's why their programming doesn't run that way. But those are some of the technical things. You may be bored with those things, but they're very important to know. Uh, within this system, is, it's called phaser circuitry. That's exclusive to True Rife. 
And what phase shifting does, and here this goes back to my musical background, guitarists use phase shifters on some of their instruments. And what a phase shifter does is it takes a single signal and it breaks it off into a pair, like this. So you've got the same tone coming out like this. And then it puts tone two out of phase, or it slightly delays it. Okay? And what, what you end up with in music is a much fuller sound. Now, Phil Spector started doing research on phase shifting. He was a music producer. I think he's in prison now. He's better with guns than he was with music. But regardless, what he did, they had two reel-to-reel -reel tapes with vocals on it. And he would start those two tapes playing. And he'd take his finger and he would touch reel two to slightly delay it and take his finger off. And all of a sudden, you had this full sound because of that slight delay. And it would sound like you were in a big auditorium instead of this very shallow sound. Well, we're, we're, we're putting phase shifting in a device. One of the things we're, we're working with is pulsations. Because pulsations have been found to kill better than a straight frequency. It's a jackhammer effect is what you're trying to get. And so most Rife systems have the ability to pulse, if not all. So why is pulsation important? If I apply pressure here to this jaw and it's constant, this is no pulse, just like this, what happens? You just push my, but if I start taking the same pressure and jamming it back and forth in a pulse, eventually I'm gonna shatter that jaw, see? And so that's the importance of pulses. That's why you see them in our systems. The pulse, the pulse command is there. Now what's interesting is some speculate in some research researchers feel that physiologically some things can adapt even to pulsations and so it's like your car going down a washboard road and it's pretty even it's and it's the shock system kind of rides up and down up and down up and down up and down and it's not a good ride but you're okay the car survives the front end survives the ball joint survive what is it that takes a car out of alignment it's a single pothole. It's the unexpected vibration that comes in and bang, and it's there. And then bang, bang, and there's another one. The system has physiologically no way to adjust. What phase shifting does, instead of a pulse, it's like this. It's like this. We call that a non-fixed disturbance. A fixed disturbance is like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Non-fixed disturbance. See? You can't adjust to that because you can't see it coming. Imagine if you're a prize fighter and if the guy's just kind of rolling back and forth like this with his fist, it's fixed. You can time him. You go back and forth. See? But there's no prize fighter that has a fixed disturbance with his fist. It's non-fixed. You don't know when it's coming. He changes. And see, that's what we're trying to do here with phase shifting. Now, when we first developed that part of our systems, uh, we released that to one researcher who now owns like six of our systems. And uh, she immediately upgraded her other F-117s uh, to the phase shifting because the results were, that she was achieving, she reported, were, were dramatically uh, much better or quicker. Uh, the new machines, if you have an old phaser, you have a switch, phase on and off. The, all the new devices, they're just automatically on all the time. We run that non-fixed disturbance at all times. So it's very, very important that, that we understand that.